Most 3D printers these days produce great looking parts straight out of the box, but good looking and accurate are two very different things. If you're printing a baby Yoda or a Roctopus, you probably don't care if your finished print is 30.5mm wide instead of 30mm, but in something like a robot actuator or a gear train, even 0.1mm can lead to a lot of backlash or slop in the system, or even worse, it can mean that parts will not even fit together. I'm going to take a budget printer and see if I can make it produce parts as accurate as my highly modified Voron that I normally use. Kingroon have kindly sent me this little KPS3 Pro for the video, but all the opinions here are my own and they're not paying me to be nice about it. That being said though, this little printer is awesome. I've got the upgraded model with linear guides on all the rails and a removable bed. I've done a load of testing on it and found that I can print at about 120mm a second with really high accelerations and still get decent prints. I really wish I'd had this kind of printer when I first started 3D printing, and for the price I can thoroughly recommend it. The question is though, can a budget 3D printer like this print precisely enough for backlash free robotics? The profile we're making here will be specific to this printer in this filament, but the process will work fine for any printer out there. I've done the basic tuning off camera, the bed is level, the E-steps are calibrated, and I've measured the filament diameter with these comically oversized calipers. I'll start off with the basic profile that comes with the printer. I'll change the layer height to 0.3mm to speed things up. Now the first thing we want to do is calibrate the flow rate of the filament. I've already done the extruder steps calibration and set the diameter of the filament, but I find with these basic extruders, they can perform differently on different filament types, so it's definitely worth doing. I'll print this 30mm cubish model, turning the walls down to 1, infill down to 0 and no top layers. This will print a nice hollow cube, and we can see how thick the walls are. I'm measuring the walls to be about 0.45mm. In the slicer, I've got the line thickness set to 0.44mm, so this is telling me that I need to turn the flow down slightly. 0.44 divided by 0.45 is 0.98, so we'll set the flow to 0.98 and see what happens. That's come out perfectly. So now we can move on to calibrating the external dimensions. I've designed up this tower with squares decreasing in size by 10mm at each time. We'll print this off with three walls, three top and bottom layers and 15% infill. Measuring each square shows us the print is slightly undersized, but this method's going to work just as well if it's oversized. Anyway, I'll drop all these measurements into a spreadsheet to make them easier to see. So it looks like every square is off by the same amount, around about 0.06mm. This is actually really close. I've seen this up to about 0.1mm before. Anyway, we can go into Cura, enable the setting for horizontal expansion, and set it to 0 0.06. If your print is too big, just make this a negative value and that'll shrink it down. I'll quickly reprint it with these settings to check it works. Perfect. Next we need to deal with the seam. This has been hidden from us so far, as the printer's placed it on one of the corners of the square that we've printed. But when we're printing something with no corners, like a circle or a cycloid, it can be really visible. And it can also make the meshing of gears or cycloids noticeably different at different places. The seam is caused by the printer extruding too much when it finishes one line and moves up to the next layer. All extruders suffer from this slightly, but the amount can vary between extruders and even between different filaments. The best way I've found to mitigate this is using a feature called coasting. This setting actually stops the extruder pumping out plastic before it stops moving, which means there's less pressure to extrude plastic when it moves on to the next layer. If we enable it and set it to a high number like 2mm, you can see in the preview there are actual gaps in the print where the extruder stops extruding. Now the last thing we want is gaps in our print, so the trick here is to balance the number just right. We want to get rid of the excess pressure, but not cause a gap to form at all. I normally use this little cylinder model to start tuning, and I'll start the coasting at 0.5mm, moving down until no gaps show. This can also be solved through Linear Advance, which I use on my other printers, but this requires recompiling Marlin or moving to Clipper, which is probably a topic for a video all in itself. 
It turns out that randomly we got it right first time. 0.5mm is the perfect amount for this little printer. You can see that the seam here is still just visible, but there's no bulging there at all. The final thing to do is calibrate the inside diameter of holes. I've designed this cylinder, which is 20mm in diameter at the top, and decreases in diameter by 0.2mm every 10mm as it goes down. I've got a ring that goes with it with a 20mm hole in the middle. This is fresh off the printer, and we can see right now that the ring will easily go over the bottom two sections, but won't go over the one that's second from the top, let alone the top one. To make this better, we can enable another setting called Hole Horizontal Expansion. This will increase the size of the holes in any model. We'll start by setting it to a conservative 0.1mm. Here's the newly printed ring, and I thought this would take a couple of goes, but yet again we've got it right on the first try. It'll easily go over the first three sections, and then the one that's actually 20 millimeters in diameter, it's a nice interference fit, and that's exactly what we're looking for. So I guess all that's left to do is print something with our new profile. I'm gonna print a new cycloidal drive for my robot arm project. Let's see how it does. The main housing printed in about three and a half hours. It looks good and came off the print bed easily. Let's put this together. To speed things up, I've printed the black parts on one of my other printers, but all the yellow parts are done on this little one with a new profile. This is a 20 to 1 cycloidal reducer. If you'd like to see more details on this, then I'll link the video where I made it up in the top corner. Well, that's come out absolutely perfectly, and I think it's ready to go back on my robot arm. There's no discernible play or backlash, and the parts don't bind, so I'm calling this a big success. As I said before, King Grun aren't paying me to be nice about this printer, but I'm really impressed with it. The parts it makes are just as good as my Voron, and for a non-core XY machine, it seems to print really fast, and I think it would make a great first printer, as long as you're okay with this slightly smaller bed size. Although that does have its advantages, it will actually fit straight on the bed of my CR10, and even goes nicely on top of my oscilloscope. If you'd like to get hold of one of these, I'll leave a link down in the description. I hope this has been helpful to you. If so, please click those like and subscribe buttons, and why not go and watch how I made the cycloidal drive here? See you later.